This video is brought to you by Leaving Time by Jodi Piku, available in paperback now wherever books are sold. Leaving Time follows 13-year-old Jenna, who is searching for her mother Alice, an elephant researcher who disappeared a decade earlier after an accident at her elephant sanctuary. She enlists the aid of two unlikely helpers uh, in her search for her mother, a psychic who has previously worked searching for missing persons but has begun to doubt her abilities, and a jaded private detective with previous connections to Alice. This is a moving and gripping page-turner from a New York Times bestseller, so check out Leaving Time by Jodi Pico in paperback now wherever books are sold. Hey, I'm Rebecca Shinsky, the director of content for Book Riot, and this week I want to talk about one of my favorite tropes in fiction, which is what I call the band gets back together. It's usually a story about a family or a group of friends having some kind of reunion or like going on vacation together, coming back together in one place for a short period of time and hashing out all their issues. I think these are particularly fun to read in the summer, especially if you're going on vacation with your family or group of friends, and I've picked out a couple favorites to share today. My all-time favorite Gang Gets Back Together story is Maine by J. Courtney Sullivan. This takes place when three generations of women, uh, the grandmother, the mother, and then two sisters from the Kelleher family get together at the family's beach house in Maine. There's a family trip every summer. Usually it's like a great fun thing that all the generations look forward to, but this year, not so much. It seems that everybody in the family is working through some kind of issue or complication. And of course, when they're all in a house together, it really comes to a head. There's nowhere to go to get away from your family. You just have to deal with what's right in front of you. Sullivan rotates the chapters between the different women's perspectives. And so we get each of their experiences in that moment and their own backstories and we get to see how they view each other so you get really a full picture of who these women are and what they're bringing to this family trip. I tore through this book when it came out a couple summers ago. If you haven't read it yet, make it your first stop this summer. Next up is Seating Arrangements by Maggie Shipstead. This is also kind of a waspy New England story about a destination wedding. If you've ever been to a destination wedding, you know it takes on this kind of summer camp feeling where people who didn't know each other become friends very quickly and it usually only lasts for the duration of the wedding trip. So members of the family and their extended group of friends have all come together at one family's beach house to get ready for the wedding weekend. This book also has rotating chapters between a bunch of different characters' perspectives, and so we get like the philandering husband, and we get the bridesmaid who's looking to cause some trouble, and we get the two fiancés. There's some farce, some really unexpected, hilarious, absurd moments, but also some really tender, thoughtful looks at marriage and family, uh, how much we gloss over about weddings and how complicated committing your life to another person can really be. It's a lot of fun and a quick read, also really great for your next beach trip. Next I want to talk about The Vacationers by Emma Straub. This comes out in paperback next week on June 2nd, so start looking for it now or put it on your library list or whatever. This is about the Post family who go on a two-week trip to Mallorca, Spain together, ostensibly to celebrate their daughter's recent graduation from high school. The mom and dad are recovering from an infant fidelity, I won't tell you who did what, or at least they're trying to figure out if they can recover their marriage from an infidelity. The teenage daughter just wants to meet a boy and lose her virginity, you know, pretty typical summer goals for an 18 year old. They have um, some best friends who are trying to adopt a child, and then they have an older son who he and his wife kind of serve as the comedic relief of the story, but they have some kind of serious things going on. The, this one also rotates between characters' perspectives. That seems a really good way to tell this kind of story and strategy is excellent at doing this in her books. There's so much warmth and humor and Emma Straub has real empathy for her characters but she's so insightful in how she observes them. It's also a really good uh, substantial read. I think often we talk about beach reads as being fluffy but none of these books are light in that sense. They're quick and easy to read but they contain a lot to think about. Last up is a book that I just got and I haven't had a chance to read yet, but I'm hearing tons of buzz and I'm really looking forward to. This is The Turner House by Angela Flournoy. It's about a Detroit family with 13 children who all return home after their father dies and they have to figure out what to do with the home that they all grew up in. The city has changed a lot and is continuing to change. And the 13 kids all have different things going on in their lives, different things that they want and that they want to see happen to their family's home. And so this is 
their story of trying to reconcile that, make the best decisions that they can by their family, and also consider the city that they live in. There are a bunch more great Band Gets Back Together books, and I would love to hear your recommendations from your favorites as well, so leave them in the comments down below, and don't forget to click on subscribe to stay up to date with all of Book Riot's bookish goodness. I'll see you next time.